topic of food, faith, and ecology, grounding and gratitude. <clears throat> I'll begin with a bit of a story. Over the river and through the woods in a farmhouse in the Virginia mountains stands Beulah's table, a big friendly table in the center of the kitchen. At that table, Beulah served steaming bowls of just harvested okra and squash to her seven children. She preserved green beans and memories in wide-mouthed canning jars, lining them up on the table, a nourishing sentry to guard her family through the winter. Beulah rocked little ones to sleep in the chair by the wood-burning stove that was there in the kitchen next to the table. Beulah's table is not fancy. Boxes of cereal, newspapers, mail, photographs, all of that, they camouflage the, the tabletop. Pound cake, too, and the promise of iced tea. And something about all of that makes this table, for me at least, prophetic. Food and fellowship, nourishment and grace are always available. Even when times were hard, friends were welcomed to Beulah's table. Strangers, too. At that table, bread was broken and stomachs and hearts filled. And in the breaking of the bread, the taste, the sharing, the conversation, God made God's presence known. So how did Beulah's table become a sacred place laden with hospitality and hope? And what does this table have to do with ecological well-being, climate justice, food, faith, ecology? Beulah said it best herself, Nariah Baptist Church saw our family through some hard times. It reminds me, she said, of all the times we had Sunday dinner on the ground, there was always enough and some left over because we all shared. Prayer was the same way, too. Our pastor stood behind the communion table. People shared their concerns. The pastor prayed. The church had more than enough love and faith to go around. Beulah's farmhouse kitchen table and Christian worship's communion table share some characteristics Hospitality, nourishment, fellowship, God's presence. From the vantage point of both tables, I think, a redeemed world can be envisioned and maybe even embodied. Beulah taught me the stories, geographies, economies, agricultural bounties of particular places. This is where faith is rooted and from where faith emerges. Ecological well-being and Christian worship practices are connected. To energize this connection, we have to be aware of the links between worship rituals and everyday life, between faith and the places where we live, work, and play. For example, the Lord's Supper is a sacred communal meal of bread and fruit of the earth. Baptism in the Christian tradition is a cleansing and initiation ritual that uses water. These earthy elements and everyday actions connect people in Christian communities to God, Christ, Spirit. What if, I wonder, we also connected these earthy elements and actions, bread and water, eating and washing, to a recognition of how much life's flourishing depends on the health of the earth and our responsible relationships to the earth? 